In this lesson, we're looking at DNA structure. This is the first part of Unit 4. So only two dot points here, but really important foundational knowledge moving forward. All right, so let's recall the four main types of macromolecules that exist within an organism. We've got carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. They're all formed by smaller monomers, which join together to form polymers or large molecules with repeating subunits. Now, nucleic acids carry hereditary information from one generation to another, and we're going to discuss both DNA and RNA because they are both types of nucleic acids. So DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. There are no hyphens in there. I've just put it in there to break the word up. The deoxy and the ribo, we're talking about a ribose sugar and the deoxy part, we can actually see if we place spot the difference that instead of an, uh, an OH group there, we've got just an H group in the deoxy ribose. Now we're talking nucleic acids here and they are nitrogen rich nucleotide bases, which the structure is made from. DNA carries information in the form of genes, and genes are sections of DNA which can provide instructions to code uh, for the order of amino acids in a polypeptide chain. This is one of part, you know, one of our other macromolecules, which are part of proteins. So DNA controls the cell's activity with protein synthesis, and it can self-replicate when the cell needs to divide and multiply, right? So DNA appears in the nucleus of eukaryotes within the cytoplasm of prokaryotes, but it's also actually interestingly in mitochondria and chloroplasts. Now, the monomer of DNA molecule is known as a nucleotide, right? Looks a bit like this. And each nucleotide consists of a phosphate, a five carbon sugar, and a, a nitrogenous base, right? It's an organic compound we're going to keep referring to as a base. Now, the phosphate molecule here is consistent between all nucleotides and it's slightly negatively charged. The sugar here is a pentagonal molecule, right? It's made from five carbon atoms, uh, deoxyribose in uh, DNA, but also ribose in RNA, hence the different acronym. Now, the nitrogenous bases are one of four options in DNA, and you may have seen these in early years in year 10 and referred to them by the first letter. So T, C, G, and A for thymine, cytosine, guanine, and adenine. Now, the nucleotide polymerase, so it all joins together, and they form a double helix. So imagine a twisted ladder here. DNA structure is depicted in so many different ways, and it's important to be able to interpret multiple pictures using the exact same knowledge. We are going to use this 2D version of our double helix to look at the features, right? It is a double helix. It is that twisted ladder. Now, the phosphate and the sugar molecules form the type of backbones or the uprights of the ladder, while the nitrogenous bases form the rungs, and they're bonded together uh, with weak hydrogen bonds. Now, before the specific structure of DNA uh, could actually be analysed, they had to look at the composition of the molecule, and from this, what they could say was, with confidence, is to say that the number of, say, adenines was always equal to the number of thumbs. Means. And from this, they inferred that the nitrogenous bases are always paired together in a complementary way. Adenine will always match up with thymine and cytosine will always match up with guanine. Now, DNA strands run in an anti-parallel way. The two strands are orientated, so they're actually facing in different directions. Now, each carbon within the deoxyribose sugar is allocated a number from 1 to 5, and within the single nucleotide, the phosphate group is actually bonded with the fifth carbon. So, if this section of the nucleotide is exposed at the end of the nucleotide chain, we call this the five prime end, and that's how it's written, five with an apostrophe. The next nucleotide in the sequence will attach via the phosphate molecule bonding to the third carbon on the previous sugar. Okay, So this is at the bottom of the long chain, and we refer to this as the three prime end, and each strand runs in opposite directions. On a bigger scale, this is what we're talking about here. So basically, it's whatever carbon end is exposed. So on the right-hand side of the strand, it's the third carbon that's kind of sticking out and exposed, whereas at the other end, our five prime is attached to the phosphate that's sticking out. Now, a huge amount of genetic information is held within a DNA strand, and within eukaryotes, there are many of these DNA strands within a nucleus, right? It's 46 in every nucleus in human cells. So in order to fit it into every cell, it must compact down really efficiently, which also protects it from damage. So the DNA coils really, really tightly into its double helix, and then it curls around 
proteins called histone proteins. Now this um, will curl around itself over and over again. At this stage it's called chromatin. So the strand of DNA plus the histones it was super coil in different patterns to form a very large chromosome. So we might be talking about DNA, we might be talking about chromosomes. Essentially we're looking at the same type of thing. Now in most human cells 46 of these are in each nucleus and that's going to unravel to create about two meters worth of DNA. Now within eukaryotes, these chromosomes are found in the nucleus. In prokaryotes with no membrane bound organelles, it's found in the nucleoid region uh, within the cytoplasm, which just directly exposed to all the other cell elements. So DNA is usually circular in prokaryotes. Um, there's much less of it. Eukaryotes have something like 25 times the amount of genetic material in a cell. And this means that DNA in prokaryotes can be replicated really quickly, like in minutes, as opposed to say hours. Prokaryotes also have bonus DNA known as plasmas, which contain really beneficial but non-essential genes. Um, and they can replicate independent of the main DNA chromosome. DNA, interestingly, is also found in the mitochondria and the chloroplasts of eukaryotes. Now, it's circular in here as well, and this actually gives evidence for the idea of the endosymbiotic theory. And this theory kind of postulates that the original eukaryotes were first formed from prokaryotes that ingested other prokaryotes that had beneficial functions like cellular respiration or photosynthesis, right? So this gave rise to genetic information being stored in what was previous you know, previously like a, an independent single-celled organism that's now just an organelle within a bigger cell. So mitochondrial DNA is usually only inherited from the mitochondria, and during fertilization, only the egg is bringing any of those mitochondria to the party. So almost all mitochondria DNA is inherited maternally, and the same applies for chloroplast DNA from female flowers. Right, RNA is the other type of nucleic acid which we'll learn about down the track and it differs from DNA in three main ways. All right, the number of strands, RNA is single-stranded where DNA is double-stranded. The type of sugar that's being used, we're talking deoxyribose versus ribose. And the uh, nucleotide bases it uses where DNA uses A, T, C and G. RNA subs out thymine, right, no more thymine, but it uses uracil and that's what's going to pair up with adenine. Now, RNA, we're going to learn a lot more about its structure and functions later on. Uh, it's primarily involved in the processes of protein synthesis, which is a huge topic for us in the coming weeks. Okay, so be prepared. Here are our two dot points. Really important that we get these correct before we move on.